At the beginning of 2021, I resolved to do videos on subjects that people had been requesting for years. These subjects included things like the manga series Berserk, JRPGs like Persona and Final Fantasy, and various anime series. I stayed away from these subjects for the longest time because, well, I, like many people, generally don't like stuff that is unfamiliar and rests outside their comfort zone. The world of anime was one of those few subjects because up until this year, I generally didn't watch a lot of television. It's a huge time sink for me, and I often feel guilty if I spend too many hours in a row indulging in entertainment. No disrespect to those that do, by the way, it's just something I didn't do. However, thanks to the help of my viewers, I was directed to the quintessential anime, the ones that centered around themes and motifs that I discuss a lot on this channel. This, combined with the fact that the recommended anime was often relatively short, helped me immensely. I started my coverage of anime with my one and only video on the subject back in August, when I analyzed Neon Genesis Evangelion. Today, I continue this trend with a video on Serial Experiments Lane. If you are a newcomer to my channel, or have never heard of Serial Experiments Lane, I will explain why this anime was recommended to me above all else. My presence on YouTube is virtually synonymous with the fact that I frequently discuss the psychoanalytic theories of Carl Jung. Moreover, I discuss the various pathways to divinity and enlightenment that are depicted in religious concepts and in fiction, particularly with video games. The theories of Carl Jung and the concept of divinity features heavily in Serial Experiments Lane, and they are depicted in ways that are as unnerving as they are brilliant. Granted, some might not see the underlying brilliance of this series, and understandably so. The narrative and the visuals are presented in a purposefully disorienting way, reminiscent of the work of David Lynch. Unless you are willing to spend hours re-watching the anime and reading about it online, you are likely not going to understand everything that is going on. However, if you are a fan of that Lynchian avant-garde style, you might unlock the secrets of this anime. And those secrets have to do with the next stage of human evolution. Specifically, our evolution into godlike beings. I'm not joking, by the way. Aside from one or two specific details, Serial Experiments Lane offers a reasonable pathway for human beings to achieve something like divinity. It's not a scientifically verified pathway, don't get me wrong, but it is worthy of discussion. In the world of Serial Experiments Lane, Carl Jung's theories are married with scientific advancement in order to elevate human beings to godlike status. If we make the assumption that Jung's theories are true, or at least partially true, then the proposals made by Serial Experiments Lane necessitate our attention. I will explain what those proposals are in a moment, but before I do, I need to say one quick thing. If you haven't watched the original anime, I highly recommend you do. You can watch it for free on YouTube, with or without subtitles, and it only takes four hours to get through the whole thing. I'll link to both the subbed and dubbed versions in the description box below. Now, let's get started. I will begin by explaining a few of Jung's basic concepts in the simplest terms. If you have been around my channel for a while and already know the concepts of the ego and the self, then feel free to skip to this point in the video. First, all you need to know about the ego is that the ego is an individual's consciousness. Anybody that is conscious and has a sense of self has an ego. Jung theorized that the ego goes through a transformation process as it goes through life. It transforms by integrating contents from the unconscious mind into consciousness. What this means is that the ego isn't the entirety of a person's mind. The ego is only the conscious side. There is also an unconscious side to a person's mind, one that Jung refers to as the shadow. By confronting one's shadow, by introspecting, by considering one's faults, weaknesses, and shortcomings, one can integrate the unconscious contents that reside in the shadow into the conscious ego. This is how we grow into better, more well-rounded people. 
By the way, in case you're a fan of the band Tool, this concept is alluded to in their song, 46 and 2. I bring up Tool and this particular song because I will be referencing it again later in this video. Anyways, one inevitable question that results from this is whether or not there is an end to this process of introspection. Well, actually there is. Jung referred to this end as the self. When the person you are right now becomes everything that you could be, then you have achieved the self. In other words, the self is the most ideal version of you. Jung theorized that this archetype of the self is what all human beings unconsciously strive for. Well, at least all moral beings who wish to become better people. This is why, in Jung's mind, symbols like Jesus or Buddha have become universally well known. These two are symbols of that highest ideal, of the man that every human being strives to be. One might say they are ideal because both Jesus and Buddha transcended death. What can be more ideal than that, right? Problem is, transcending death is such an impossibility that supposedly only one or two people in history had succeeded. If we could find our own pathway to the self, then we could transcend our body and become like God if only it weren't so difficult. But what if there was a way that we could instantaneously make all those unconscious contents conscious? What if we could shine a light on the shadow and ascend to godhood in a matter of minutes, rather than over the course of a long and painful life? Serial Experiments Lane offers one possible method at achieving this sort of transcendence. Before I can explain how one would achieve that transcendence, I need to address two entities that are frequently referenced in the anime. One is the Knights, also known as the Knights of the Eastern Calculus, and the other is Deus, also known as Eri Masami. The Knights are a mysterious group of computer crackers. They worship a computer program that exists within the Wired, which is the name given to this anime's version of the internet. This computer program is appropriately named Deus, because he is the god of the Wired. This god takes on the form of Eri Masami, a key designer for the Wired who is obsessed with trying to blur the line between reality and virtual reality, to allow human beings to seamlessly cross between the Wired and the real world. Not only that, he is the one who would instantaneously make unconscious contents conscious making every human being on Earth achieve the Jungian self without the suffering inherent to life. But how would he do this? Well, it centers around another one of Jung's concepts, one that is referenced by name many times during the anime. That concept is known as the Collective Unconscious. Again, if you have been watching my videos for a while and know what the Collective Unconscious is, feel free to skip to this point in the video. For the rest of you who don't know what the collective unconscious is, I will explain. Every human being has an unconscious mind that, according to Jung, has two sides. One side is the personal unconscious, and the other is the collective unconscious. The personal unconscious is where we store unconscious contents that are unique to us, things like memories. The collective unconscious is sort of like a psychic force that binds all human beings together. It is the source from which all human minds originated, and it is where these minds return to upon death. In other words, it is an infinite, formless sea of psychic information. It is the collective unconscious that gifts the human mind with everything it needs upon birth. Things like instincts and archetypes. The common example I use to explain this is the archetype of a mother, and the instinct to breastfeed. A baby is instinctually driven to recognize the mother because it is instinctually driven to recognize this image, this archetype. It is also instinctually driven to feed from the mother's breast milk. All human beings are born with this information because the collective unconscious gifted it to them. It is from the collective unconscious that human beings garner the information needed to bring themselves closer to their personal ideal, to the Jungian self. As I said before, they garner this information through painful introspection, a process that occurs throughout one's life and almost never reaches the end because it is so painful. However, Eri Masami and the Knights wish to offer humanity a pathway to the self, 
They do this by objectifying the collective unconscious into something tangible, and hooking the human brain up to it. But how does one objectify a force that contains an infinite amount of information, then connect it to the human brain and force the human brain to download that information? Easy. They use the internet. Or rather, the wired. The wired slash internet is the digital version of the collective unconscious. If the human brain could be connected to it, it could download all the unconscious information it requires in order to achieve their version of the Jungian self, their highest ideal. But it gets better. Let me ask you this. What happens if all human beings were able to do this at once? What if all human beings became conscious of their links to each other within the collective unconscious? What if they were hooked up to the collective unconscious and became a sort of global hive mind? Other works of fiction have pondered this concept. The aforementioned Neon Genesis Evangelion gave its own take on the concept in the End of Evangelion movie, where all human beings on Earth combined into one divine body. Going back to Tool, the metaphysical concept of 46 and 2 invented by Drumvalo Melchizedek is another take on the same concept. In Melchizedek's mind, the human species would evolve to 46 and 2 chromosomes, and this would allow them to operate both as individuals and as a hive mind. In respect to Serial Experiments Lane, this elevation of the collective unconscious to consciousness would be achieved via our use of the internet. Now, some of you might say, wait a second. Even if you could elevate the collective unconscious to consciousness, how would humans be able to function if their bodies were connected to computers all day? They would all eventually have to leave and get food or go to work. In response to this, Airy came up with an idea that would allow human beings to connect to the wired wirelessly. This involved using something known as the Schumann Resonance, a concept referenced in Episode 9. The Schumann Resonance is an electromagnetic field that surrounds the Earth. In the anime, it is proposed that these fields have a direct impact on the human brain. If Airy can match the frequency that the Schumann Resonance emits with the frequency emitted by the wired, then people could connect their brains to the wired without, well, wires. Airy began to progress human beings to this stage of wireless connection by installing what is known as Protocol 7 into the wired, a protocol which would begin that mutual resonance. I understand that the science around the Schumann resonance is iffy, to put it politely. It is as iffy as using a drug known as Excella to speed up a brain's processing power, or using a psyche chip to connect human consciousness to the internet. But with that said, is the fundamental concept proposed by Serial Experiments Lane not intriguing? What if we could objectify the collective unconscious using the internet? What if? we could connect our brains to it, download the information we need, and achieve the highest version of ourselves. If Jung's theories are somewhat true, and if human brains can be augmented, who knows what could happen? But now I would like to propose a question that some of you might not have considered. Would you even want to become like a god? If you were paying attention to the anime, you would have noticed that it's one big argument against becoming like a god and instead preserving what makes you human. In fact, the whole anime is a celebration of human mortality and imperfection, and it is presented through the character of Lane. The question of Lane's true nature is still debated amongst anime fans over two decades later. If I may provide my own interpretation, I think it makes most sense if we assume that she is the personification of the collective unconscious. She is a microcosm of the macrocosm. As above, so below. This perspective is backed up by statements like the one made in Episode 8 by Daves. He attributes qualities to Lane that are also attributable to the collective unconscious, namely that they are omnipresent, that they bind and penetrate everything that exists. This is a trait that is also shared by common real-life conceptions of God. To put it simply, the collective unconscious, God, and Lane are all the same. Now if Lane is the collective unconscious given form, how was it that she could cross over from the Wired, where she was born, over into the real world? How would the border between the real world and the Wired be broken? 
Well, given the fact that the frequency of wired connected brains across the world were resonating with the Schumann frequency, both Lane and the Wired were able to trick humanity into believing that she was actually there. Though she was merely a hologram, the brains of those around her were tricked into thinking that she had a physical body. This is why Lane seems able to bleed, even though in reality, she isn't bleeding. Lane crossed over into the real world after she asked Aerie if she could have an ego, a body. Before she made that transition, she asked Aerie to ensure that she wouldn't remember her previous existence. She figured this would allow her to fully experience what it meant to be truly human. This is why, for most of the anime, Lane has a hard time understanding all the reality-defying events that occur. She didn't understand how there could be multiple versions of not just her, but her friends and family. It is only around the last four episodes that Lane begins to remember her origin, and understand the plan that Eri and the Knights have for her. The ultimate goal of Eri and the Knights was to have Lane, in ignorance of her origin, sacrifice herself to Eri. This would allow Eri to gain control over Lane's memory-altering powers, and reshape reality according to their whims. It would also, in effect, allow Eri and the Knights to surpass Lane and the Collective Unconscious, becoming the ultimate rulers of the Wired, the real world, and humanity. All Lane had to do to make this happen was kill herself in the real world, which is why Eri is constantly asserting that the mind doesn't need the body if it can live on in the Wired. Though Lane is tempted to commit suicide throughout much of the anime, she ultimately decides against it in episode 12, she believes that the body is important, and lets Eri prove her point. When Lane refuses to go along with Eri's plan, he tries to will himself into existence, to create a body in order to force Lane to go along with his plan. When he does this, Lane throws Eri's words back in his face. She says, I thought you said flesh wasn't necessary. It is with this confrontation that Lane exalts the human condition. Though the possession of a body brings suffering, mortality, and ignorance, it is also what allows us to experience reality in the keenest possible way. Eri, a formless, bodiless deity, cannot appreciate what it is truly like to be human, and thus cannot rule over them effectively. He cannot even be humble enough to recognize that the ideas he possesses aren't his own, but instead came from a different source, one that Lane represents. He can never understand why elevating the collective unconscious to consciousness might be a bad idea. He doesn't understand why rushing towards the end would be against humanity's interest. It would be easier to reach the end this way, sure, but it would be like using cheat codes to reach the end of a video game right when you're just beginning. You would forbid yourself of the journey, of the individual moments you experience through life. You can't experience those moments if you're a god if you're everything in its totality. Thus, Lane decides to condemn Eri to death, and preserve that one part of humanity that makes them better, makes them more special than a deity, and that is the possession of flesh. Thanks for watching. It's good to be back doing videos after a week-long vacation. If you liked my analysis and would like to see me do more videos on anime, please recommend which anime you'd like to see me do next. Do not worry, this will not conflict with my regular video game related content. There will be gaming videos coming out in the next week or so. Before you leave though, make sure to give this video a like. It's free and it helps me out a tremendous amount. Until my next video, just remember, stay yellow.